Hey friends, thanks for coming by my channel. This video is a longer form walkthrough of my process for flipping this sample as a part of Andrew Huang's For Producers episode. I hope you enjoy. When I first got the sample and I heard it, I was like, oh my gosh, this guy's voice is so beautiful. There's violins in it. I play violin, yay. My mind started going crazy with all kinds of ideas of things to do. One of the first things that I thought of was to try this plugin called Paul Stretch. I have no idea why this just popped into my mind, but I remember hearing a Miley Cyrus song through this plugin and it sounded like a beautiful ambient work of art. And so I decided to see if the sample would sound amazing in Paul Stretch. So the first thing that I did in Paul Stretch was to bring in the sample, just dragged and dropped it. And I mapped some of the parameters on here, like the harmonics, harmonics bandwidth, as well as the stretch amount. And I used my MIDI fighter to tweak these amounts over time. Then I resampled to another track, capturing all of my movements, and I recorded for about 13 and a half minutes long. And the resulting sample sounds like this. Then I brought the sample into a session and started to chop it up. And I found all the best parts that I liked. And I just kind of went through and picked apart the Paul Stretch 
13 minute long clip that I recorded. And then from there, I resampled, I re resampled <laughs> all of this stuff into another track. So I did something like this and recorded. Made a loop. And just started pressing the record button here. And started moving around the loop, having the loop, making the loop longer. And after I was done with that, I had a bunch more audio resampled of the resample. And then I started to fit that into my song. So throughout the track, I am using the Paul stretched version of the sample as well as the original sample. So the very beginning of the song, all of this is the Paul stretched version of the sample. added a little transposition on the end of the sample here. And I also resampled the strings from the Paul stretch sample here. And I played it with my push. I also used the regular sample just all over the place. I didn't want to pitch this or change this. I wanted to keep it pretty true to the way that it sounded because I thought that he was so emotive when he sang and I just wanted to keep that um, in the song. If I solo this up here, we can hear some of the vocal chops that I put in here and you can see in the drop here. So these are pitched differently. Um, you can see I color coded them just to show that the pitch is different. So I, I created a, a melodic version of the vocals here um, from the sample. And then at the end of the song, um, I also just, I teased out the very last line, which I love. It just kind of brings some closure to the entire song. So am I next to close the door? And I just delayed that string sample at the end. Uh, I thought that was a really interesting way to end. I didn't use the full string sample on purpose because I wanted to add all of my own strings. One of the other things that I did with the vocal was do this reverse. Ooh, I cannot hold you. So I just reversed his vocal there. I also added a sample, vocal sample. So I also recorded a bunch of my own vocals in the session and treated each one different ways, did different kinds of panning and added effects. You can see here, stacks on stacks on stacks, harmonies, low harmonies, high harmonies. Um, I also did uh, some pitch stuff with little altar boy low stuff, high stuff. So that got pitched to this. Just wanted to sound like an otherworldly kind of robot choir here. For some of the vocals in the track, the sample, I used my Wii controller to mess around with some of the parameters in Tornado, which is my favorite plugin for creating crazy vocal effects. And so I used the Wii, I used the roll to control some of the parameters here. As you can see, 
the slice arrangers going up and down. And I was resampling this to another track. So again, using the method of just like recording a bunch of stuff randomly and then picking out the best parts. So this is how I did that. You get the idea. It's super fun. It's like playing a video game with vocals and effects. I recorded using three violins in the session. Uh, the first one is my five string realist acoustic violin, and I use that for all the regular violin and viola parts. I also played my five string glasser violin. This one is a baritone violin, so it has octave down strings and it sounds like a cello. As well, I used my 3D printed 3D Various violin. It's also a five string. And I use this to play the synthesizers in the track. I recorded tons of my own layers. I had two different microphones, a condenser mic and a ribbon mic and different violins. And I stood closer to the mics and further away just to get the effect of a string orchestra. And I really wanted it to sound full. So I recorded tons of layers here all throughout the song. And so the intro here, I layered with the string sample from the sample, as well as the Paul stretched samples. The final version sounds like this. The MIDI Merlin software is a high resolution monophonic audio analysis software. So this allows me to convert the audio from my violin to MIDI in real time. I'm controlling the Continue Mini instrument by Hawken Audio. The Continue Mini is a dynamic MPE synthesizer and controller that processes data on the X, Y, and Z axes. It is so expressive, and I love this instrument because it allows me the ability to play expressively on the violin with vibrato and have it translate to a synth sound. I use the Razer software with the Continue Mini and my violin to change presets and also to be able to change things like reverb, tone dynamics, octaves, and all kinds of parameters with my soft step foot controller. This helps make my violin more expressive as I'm playing this Continue Mini instrument. This is the Unreal Gaming Engine. I can control it with my violin. It's pretty next level. Can't even believe it sometimes. Technology. I also use my Buchla Thunder by Sensel to control my future classical sample pack that we created together. It's a free download on their site. I had recorded a bunch of just crazy cello stuff, like tapping it and hitting it and smacking it and all the tappings. <laughs> I also recorded a bunch of vocals and it sounds like this. And you can see down here that Aftertouch is controlling filter frequency, the mod wheel is the sample selector, pitch bend is panorama, so. You can control this with your own controller if you don't have a bukla. And I used my MIDI fighter to change the sample and add effects. Also from Sensel, the Future Classical Pack. It's 
so satisfying. One of my favorite synthesizers in my studio is the Moog Subsequent 37, and so I decided to use that in the drop of my song. a few software instruments from some of my favorite manufacturers like Arcade from Output. I found this loop in Arcade from this collection, the Obsidian. Sounds like this. And I actually layered that later with my violin and added all different kinds of harmonies with that. That was the, the beginning of that. And I also use something called Cycles from Slate Nash, which is my go-to for some interesting sound design. They also have a lot of string sounds in here. So I use these in the verse leading up to the drop. Thank you all so much for going on this journey with me. It was a blast. I love spending time with you. Thank you for all your comments and support. Thanks for watching.